Hey guys, welcome to another Flutter tutorial. My name is Tensor. In today's video, we will be building out a sketch application. So the user will be able to touch the screen and hold their finger down. And this will allow them to then draw something or write something. And then when they want to clear the screen, they can hit a button at the bottom. If we look at the code that's currently in our file, we've just got two widgets. We've got a stateless widget. It builds out a material app. And then we've got our stateful widget, which points towards a state object, which builds out the scaffold. To approach this application, the first thing that we want to do is create a custom painter class. This custom painter class exposes various methods to us, which will allow us to essentially paint the screen, or rather repaint this screen as the user is dragging their finger over it. Let's start by creating a global variable for this class, which will be a list of offsets. This variable will be called points, and then we'll create our constructor, which will take in this list of points. We've talked about offsets before, but just to refresh you guys, an offset is essentially just a immutable point that exists on a X and Y axis. This list of points will represent the actual image that the user is drawing. So for instance, if the user taps on the screen and draws out a circle, then we'll have a list of offsets that will represent this circle inside of this variable. For our custom painter, we want to decide when the painter needs to repaint. And in this case, we want the painter to repaint if the old set of points that was inside of this class changes. So whenever the user puts their finger down, this will add a new point to this list of offsets, which will then trigger the should repaint method. And the should repaint method will then activate the paint method, which takes in the canvas and then a size. Inside of this paint method, we want to define what we want this paint to actually look like. So we'll create a paint object. The paint object exposes various different properties which we can manipulate, for instance, the color. So if we use the cascade operator, we can set the color property to be black. So when the user draws a line, the line will be black. We can also add the stroke cap property with another cascade operator the stroke cap being the edge of the actual line. So when the user draws the line, it will look like a circle because we're using stroke cap dot round. And finally, we want to set up the stroke width for this paint object so that the line is sufficiently wide and it actually can be seen decently well. So we'll use a 4.0 stroke width for this. Now we want to create a for loop which iterates over our points list. And as we iterate over our point lists, we want to apply our paint object to our points so that they will have a structure and form. So first we need to check to see that we do in fact have a point at the point that we're iterating over. And we also want to check to see that this point is connected to another point. So we check to see if point index i is not equal to null and point index i plus 1 is also not equal to null. And if both of the points, point i and then point i plus 1, are not null, then we want to call canvas.drawLine on these two points and then apply our paint to these points. So essentially we'll create a line between the two points and because the actual space between the two points is fairly small or should be fairly small, it won't actually look weird or boxy or anything like that. So all of these shapes that get drawn inside of our object will be made up of tiny little line segments. All right, so that's it for our Sketcher custom painter. Now let's go up to our user interface and build out the canvas and add in the gesture detector so that we can actually detect the user touching the screen. So in our scaffold, we create an app bar and then we'll give that a tiny little title that will just be called Sketcher. 
And then in the body, we want this to be made up of a gesture detector. So this will be on the entire screen except for the app bar itself. And then the actual gesture that we want to look for is what's called a pan update gesture. This is the gesture that happens when the user pushes their finger down and then slides it across the screen in any direction. Inside of the on pan update function, we call set state and then we create a new render box. And the render box is going to be based off of context.find render object. What this does is it goes through the widget tree and it finds the nearest render object, which in our case is actually the scaffold widget. So we're able to get all the properties like the size and the area of the scaffold and then put it into this render box object. After we get our render box object, we want to then scale our coordinates from logical pixels into a coordinate system that makes sense in relation to our scaffold render object. So we use this global to local method on box and then we pass in details dot global position. This gets the global position in pixels and then it converts it into a set of coordinates which then gets put into our offset. And these coordinates again are based off of our scaffold. Then because we want to account for the fact that we have an app bar inside of our application, we need to translate our points so that the y-axis of our points doesn't actually count the app bar as part of the sketching screen. So what we can do here is we can say point equals point dot translate and then for y we put in 0, 0.0 and then for x we put in app bar dot preferred size which is the size of our app bar and then we get the height of that and we cut it off of the y coordinate for our offset. Now we can come up to the top of our state class and create a list of offset and then down here we can push our point into this list of offset. So here we get our points list and then we create a new list based on the points list, push it into the points variable and then we use our cascade to add the point that was created by the user dragging their finger around the screen. Inside of our build function above our scaffold we can create the sketch area. We want to create a new container and our container will be final. We want to create a margin for it so all around it will have a 4 pixel margin and then our alignment will be at the top left so it will be aligned with the top left corner of the screen next to the app bar. Then we'll give it a slight blue gray color and finally we can give it a child which will be a custom paint widget and then the painter for this custom paint widget will be our sketcher and we can pass in our list of points. This custom paint widget is a bit like a sliver or a render box widget in that we can use the painter sort of like a delegate. So because we have our custom painter that we created below, we can use that to define the various different behaviors for this custom paint object, which in our case is the behavior to paint our points with tiny little black lines between each pair of points. So now back in our gesture detector, we want to check for the ending of the actual pan. So when the user ends their pan and removes the finger, we want to be able to do something. And the main thing that we'll do is we will add null to our points list. At the end of our gesture detector, we can add our sketch area container as the child and this will then give our sketch area the properties that we added to this gesture detector. The final component that we want to consider is our floating action button and this will be the button that the user can push to clear the screen. So here we can give it a tooltip of clear screen and then we can give it a background color of colors red 
We'll make our icon be icon refresh. So this will just have a little arrow on it in a circle. And then we want this button to call set state points clear to clear the list of points that we created. All right, so here is our application. You can see that we have this blue app bar. It says Sketcher on it. Then we have this big white screen. And at the bottom, we have our floating action button, which has a little arrow in a circle. And clicking this button will allow us to clear this screen. We can draw on the screen. If you see where my pointer is and you see where it's drawing, you can tell that I've made a mistake. So the mistake that I made was I forgot to put a negative in front of this app bar dot preferred size dot height because we need to subtract the actual app bar size from the point that we're adding to the list rather than just adding it to the y coordinate of the offset. So now when I'm drawing, it's underneath of where my cursor is. And so we can draw items and we can put in text and so on and so forth. And when we want to clear the screen, we hit the button and it clears the screen completely. So this is a pretty cool application and you could very easily extend it by adding in maybe a tab bar, which would allow you to select a different color for the paint and maybe even making the actual brush size is smaller or larger based on what the user chooses from a menu. Things like that would be very easy to implement in the current application. All right, guys, well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, feel free to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the box below. And if you dislike the video, then by all means, downvote it as much as you like. Have a good day.